Hello and welcome to your channel AWS Cloud Bytes. I'm your host Bhavesh Kumar. Today we are going to talk about encryption at rest and in transit. Imagine a world where your most sensitive data is exposed to the public, vulnerable to theft and exploited for malicious purposes. This is a reality that many organizations have faced due to data breaches and cyber attacks. We are going to cover encryption at rest, encryption in transit, and the role of AWS KMS service in all of this. Encryption is the process of converting plain text into ciphertext that cannot be read without a decryption key. In simple words, it's uh, basically plain text in a way that it is uh, unintelligible or unreadable by anyone without a decryption key. It's like a safe where you have all the money and people who have the keys to that safe can actually go and unlock it and take the money out. And obviously the safe can be broken, but that's where the encryption or the strength of encryption has to come in, which means the safe is too secure or too strong to be broken. Now, looking at the data privacy, uh, which is the second point over here, encryption is crucial for protecting sensitive data from unauthorized access. Next one is data security. It prevents data breaches and unauthorized modifications, which means if you're sending a message from point A to point B, and if somebody is able to decrypt the message, they can change the message and the context of the message for the receiver of the message. So encryption, if it is a strong encryption and it is not breakable in those cases, you can prevent those kind of data breaches where somebody can decrypt and read your messages or tamper with your messages. Compliance encryption adheres to data protection regulations. In US uh, in particular, you have HIPAA and you have other uh, regulations such as uh, GDPR where it is a requirement, a compliance requirement that your data has to be protected by a certain level of encryption. The last one is the trust, where having a encryption in place allows your customer to be happy in a sense like customer will feel safe and secure. So this slide is talking about types of encryption. There are primarily two types of encryption. Uh, one is symmetric encryption. The other one is asymmetric encryption. Let's talk about the symmetric encryption. You look at this picture, you have the plain text, which is readable and you have all sensitive data over here. You have a encryption key, which is symmetric. I'll talk about symmetric and asymmetric, but what happens is using this encryption key, you apply plain text and the encryption key results in a cipher text, which is not readable or is not understandable. In order to make it again a plain text, this cipher text is passed along with the symmetric key. The same symmetric key is applied to decrypt, which means you have single key for encryption and decryption process. You can see that encryption and decryption both use same key. Now, if you go to asymmetric encryption where you have a pair of keys, how it is different is like you have a public key and then the blue one is the private key, or you can say this key is never shared to anyone. So you share your public key to anyone who wants to send a message to you saying use this public key to encrypt whatever data you want to send. They will use the plain text, use the public key and you will have the cipher text. Once the cipher text reaches you, you apply your private key to perform the decryption and read whatever was sent by the sender. So in this case, there are two different keys that are applied and this is called private key. This is called public key. The green one is a public key. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. This slide is talking about encryption at rest, which means when the data is saved on disk. Now encryption of data while it is on a physical storage device is critical because anyone having access to the stored physical device, they can pull the data if it is not encrypted and uh, use it for malicious purposes. In AWS, we have services like KMS, which is providing you the key management service. It is doing the generation of the keys, basically managing these cryptographic keys in a hardware security module or HSM. And these keys are used for encryption and decryption process. It also allows you to rotate the keys and uh, perform some fine-grained key policies, which allows you to give the access to the keys to right people. Only the authorized users will get access to them. The EBS over here is the block store. 
EC2 uses uh, EBS volumes. Whenever you create an EC2 instance, you can have an EBS volume, which can be unencrypted volume. You can apply uh, encryption using the KMS managed keys. KMS allows you to encrypt the EBS volumes and the encryption and decryption process is handled automatically and it is seamless to the application so whenever the data is stored on the ebs volume it is automatically encrypted and whenever it is pulled it is a decryption process that happens it's kind of an intercept in the middle that does the encryption as well as decryption while reading or writing to the disk you can have disk that can be pre-encrypted whenever you create a new volume, EBS volume. You can also encrypt uh, unencrypted existing disk. Then you have S3, which is uh, an object storage. In this case, the S3 object, whenever you store something on an S3 bucket, that also can be encrypted. Now, it is also using KMS uh, keys by default. You can have uh, either have a client side encryption in this case, which means the client is applying its own encryption uh, method and then uploading the data on S3. Or you can have the server side encryption by using the KMS key or it can be a customer provided key. Let's move on to the next uh, slide. This slide is talking about the other encryption, which is more about encryption in transit. Now, encryption of data while it is in transit means the data is sent over a channel and from point a to point b when the message is traveling it is traveling on a secure channel so encrypting data during the https connections vp internal and file transfer is where it is encryption in transit is applied you have aws services like cloudfront which is encrypting the data in transit using the https uh, under the hood is ssl tls it makes it uh, difficult for unauthorized parties to intercept the message or read the message. CloudFront allows you to have custom SSL certificates. You can upload your own or you can get it through AWS. Your org can go to a certificate authority and get a certificate for their organization. CloudFront also allows you to have automatic certificate management, which means uh, all the renewal of the certificate can be done using the Amazon Certificate Manager. The VPC endpoint is where you are uh, exposing your data through a private IP address, which means you are talking to AWS services using the private IP address within your VPC. Rather than going through a public IP address, which is basically going through a NAT gateway, going through the public internet, it goes through AWS backbone network or the private channel, which reduces the risk or the attack surface. It is again a preferred way to talk to services like S3, DynamoDB and many more services that are allowing you to talk privately. You have the interface endpoint and you have the gateway endpoint, two type of endpoints. Mostly now they are leaning towards the interface endpoint. Gateway endpoints were the initial implementation of VPC endpoints. Let's talk uh, briefly about the VPC connections. It is more about encrypting traffic between your on-prem network and AWS. You can have a site-to-site -site VPN where you have a secure tunnel created between on-prem and the AWS VPC, which enables you to extend your on-prem network into the cloud and securely access the data. We have VPN connection over IPsec protocol to encrypt and authenticate data. IPsec provide a strong security feature which includes uh, data confidentiality, integrity and authentication as part of it. The benefits of having a VPN connection is that you can securely connect your on-prem applications and data to AWS services, enabling your hybrid cloud infrastructure. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Now, let's talk about the KMS service that we have been looking into multiple slides prior to this. This is key management service. It is a centralized key management service for AWS. It stores, it basically generates keys. It uh, stores keys, it manages cryptographic keys, and these are managed uh, in a hardware security module, which we'll just talk briefly. It provides uh, features such as key rotation. So whatever the keys are generated, they are automatically rotated by the KMS. And you can have key policies which allow you to uh, reduce the number of people or allow you to authenticate who can actually access those keys. So it's more of a, a safety where you don't want everyone to have your keys. It is given the policy, it will allow you to just access the key or deny the access to the key. 
And then the hardware security modules are where the cryptographic keys are stored. All these keys are used for encryption and decryption of data at rest. It also creates three kind of keys, basically. You have symmetric, asymmetric, and HMAC keys. So we already talked about symmetric keys. We also talked about asymmetric keys where there's a public-private key combination. And then you have HMAC. HMAC is uh, primarily hash-based message authentication code where HMAC is a cryptographic algorithm. It is used to verify the integrity and authenticity of a message. Then it combines a secret key with a cryptographic function or hash function to generate a message authentication code, MAC for short. The way it works is it creates, a, it does a key generation, a secret key is generated and is shared between the sender and the receiver. The message to be authenticated is prepared. A secret key is uh, transformed using a cryptographic hash function. So that's a key transformation that happens. And then there is a message hashing that happens. So the message is hashed using the same cryptographic hash function. The, the key combination is the, the next step where the transform key is combined with the message hash. And the, the final hashing is the, the combined result is hashed one more time to produce the HMAC. The common use is, uh, of HMAC is around message authentication, password hashing, digital signature, and there are some um, popular algorithms around HMAC, which is uh, HMAC SHA-1 or SHA-256, HMAC SHA-256, HMAC uh, SHA-384 or SHA-512. Now, KMS is used with the EPSS3 and other AWS services. Let's move to the encryption best practices. Best practices uh, that we should be following around encryption is around the key management. So you should have a secure random number generator to generate a strong cryptographic keys. Uh, you should have a key rotation so that if the keys are compromised, it is not a long, uh, long-term valid cryptographic key. They are changing frequently. That reduces the window of compromise. The key storage is another important uh, aspect where we should be storing this key or set of keys that you are generating. Uh, you should be using some kind of a hardware security module. Then who can access should be limited because your encryption key should not be available to everyone. So that's all about the key management. Let's talk about the encryption algorithm. We should be using some good strong algorithms like AES-256 or RSA with large key sizes. Uh, we should keep us informed around the updates in encryption algorithms because with the, with the faster machines, it is possible that you, you can have some kind of uh, vulnerability coming up on the algorithm itself. We should avoid weak algorithms like DES or MD5. Uh, let's talk about the data classification. Uh, you should do classification of a data based on the type of data, whether it is a sensitive data or the data is important to or prioritized to be encrypted first. Prioritize encryption and implement retention policies like I need this data for next seven years due to some government regulation. The encryption implementation is, again, you have to do encryption at rest as well as in transit to be more secure. And you should always have encryption enabled by default. Security practices, regular audit, uh, patch management, access control, and incident response plan, all those should be in place. Compliance, regulatory compliance, third-party assessments, documentation. These are some important stuff that you need to deal with when you are having compliance as a requirement where you need to show that uh, your data is secure. And these are like uh, some standards, industry regulation and standards such as GDPR, HIPAA or PCI DSS. Those require some guidelines to be met to say that you are uh, security compliant. Let's conclude this. Uh, encryption at rest and in transit both are important. KMS is an important AWS service to learn for keeping data secure. HTTPS, VPN, SSH, and IPsec are common methods used for data in transit encryption and always follow encryption best practices. Thank you. This is the end of the episode. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe, and press the notification bell icon for future updates. This is your host, Pavesh Kumar, signing off. Thank you.